Disney is interesting because the future very well could look very different than the past, right? You know, historically, Disney's created value um, by creating but not really distributing its own content, right? Um, it really had the direct relationship with the consumer has occurred, you know, at the parks. But, you know, they would, the movies, you know, went into movie theaters and then you turned on your TV and maybe you watched an old Pixar movie. Um, but the advent of streaming technology means they can then basically cut out the middleman. They can basically tell the cable networks to all go take a hike. Um, we are going to stop paying you a lot of economic rents and we're going to develop a direct relationship with the consumer with channels like Disney Plus and Hulu. That becomes really interesting because, first of all, you're not giving up a whole bunch of economic rents to the cable networks. So there's more money for you. So that's interesting by itself, right? The other thing that's interesting is you're developing exclusivity, right? Because if you think about, you know, there might be two cable operators in your neighborhood and they've both got, you know, channels that have Disney content. Well, so what? You can use one, you can use the other. But if Disney Plus is the only place you can watch Marvel or Star Wars, hmm, that sounds like a monopoly. That sounds good to me in terms of pricing power, right? Um, and so, but it requires a lot of reinvestment, right? Because if you, ha you have to keep rolling out new content to keep people onto your platform. Uh, and then the drop-throughs can be very, very high. So, you think about it, the, the amount you need to spend on content to attract subscribers, you know, 100 million to 200 million is a lot higher than what you need to spend to get subscribers 200 million to 300 million, right? Because you've already got a whole bunch of content. And so that means the drop through becomes much, much higher. You make more money on each incremental subscriber. Uh, and so that's kind of the reinvestment angle. Um, and that's what Disney's doing right now very, very heavily. The capital allocation is an interesting question. Um, obviously, Bob Iger did a phenomenal job with um, buying the Marvel franchise, buying the Star Wars franchise, and then I think less well recognized buying BAM Tech, um, which is a technology platform that serves as kind of the core of Disney's streaming um, technology. Now, in theory, the assets are there, right? There shouldn't be the need for lots of M&A going forward. And so it's all going to be about internal capital allocation, creating the right content to attract people. That is a little bit uncertain. And Disney's got a great history of it. The DNA is certainly there, but people make flops all the time in the, in the entertainment industry, right? Um, and so that's why, you know, you need to make sure you have the margin of safety so that your capital doesn't get impaired in case, for whatever reason, you know, we roll the clock forward five years, and Disney still got Marvel and Star Wars, but not much else. Interesting. Uh, thanks, Pat. And how did you think about you know uh, the valuation framework in case of, Disney? and you know especially in light of the fact that you know uh, Disney is like a well-known mode. Uh, so you know what did you think was your you know uh, qualitative insight which gives you kind of uh, that variant perception which is not priced in? No, that's a great question. So. Basically, Disney 2005 looks really different than Disney 2000. It is kind of, or 2025 looks very different than Disney you know, 2018 or 19. And that, that, that's where the variant perception comes in. Because all that reinvestment is happening today in content to build out the DTC library, the economics right now look terrible, right? Um, but our view, based on talking to a lot of people in the industry, is that the eventual margins for DTC are going to be extremely attractive. And so that business will generate the bulk of Disney's cash flow five or six years from now. Now, we could be wrong, but that's the variant perception, uh, is that it's going to be a much more profitable business than I think most people suspect. Um, partially, and, and again, the variant perception comes from the fact that there is no scale streaming platform right now. You have Netflix, but Netflix is really only scaled up in the US. It's not really scaled up globally yet. It's getting there, right? Um, and so the, 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 the modal investor doesn't have an analog to put their head onto, right? You, know, you can say, okay, wow, enterprise software companies, they usually have 30, 40% margins. Okay, great. Um, but there simply isn't a streaming platform yet with 300 million subs. It doesn't exist. And so that means that if you can, have a forecast on what that looks like in terms of cash flow and margins, 
and you're right, <laughs> which is important, um, there's your variant perception. 